Well, hey there, Mission Control. I want to continue the system challenges series and I want to talk about fish waste. So some of you, if you've been following around for a while, you know that we put our fish tanks underneath the aquaponics beds. There's a few, few reasons we did that. First and foremost, we didn't, in a traditional aquaponics setting, they, they have their fish tanks up high so they can take advantage of gravity. So they pump water up to them and then uh, the fish waste through gravity drops to the bottom of those tanks and then they can manage that fish waste and move it throughout the system. That's a great idea and I have nothing wrong with that. that that's super smart. They're, that's a perfect way to do things. Unless you're trying to make one square foot of land equal to two. If you're going to do that in a greenhouse, you, you're going to be taking up um, vertical growing space, horizontal growing space, square footage uh, on the floor that should be used for growing food instead of just having the fish up there. So one of the first choices we made uh, is, well, let's put the fish tanks underneath of the grow beds so that we're not actually wasting any uh, growing space. So you can see we have the fish tank underneath here. It goes along the entire length of this uh, lane. If I wanted to do only one bed, I could have the fish tank directly underneath of it or I can extend uh, a fish tank underneath each one of these. We have a single pump system to help reduce electricity for this entire lane. One small pond pump controls each, um, each lane, pumps the water to each lane, and it sucks the water up that has all the fish uh, liquid waste in it up into each grow bed. Each grow bed is controlled by a series of valves, and we raise the water in the grow bed to meet the watering needs of the plant so everything's precisely controlled, and then we move on to the next bed, and this bed will empty, and it will sit empty, while the beds um, behind it cycle. That's all well and good. It keeps energy costs really low uh, per bed, relatively speaking, uh, and um, it helps save land so that we can use it to grow vegetables and such. And we can grow up to 375 full-size trout, in uh, rainbow trout in our case, uh, in this bed. So lots of fish can grow down there. We're not even close to the total amount of fish that can be underneath of this bed. But in order to have that many fish, you need to have all these beds fully operational so that the fish waste down there can be collected and moved up and the water can be kept clean. That's where the problem enters, is because we have put our fish tanks down low, we don't get the advantage of gravity. In fact, we have to work against it. So if you put your fish tanks above ground, up higher than your grow beds, then the fish waste will sink to the bottom of the tank. Usually they'll have some form of spherical gatherer collector, and that will then take that fish waste and move it to uh, a processing center uh, where they can mineralize it, they can turn it into useful stuff. We chose grow beds with red wigglers in them to do the exact same thing as a mineralization bed, only in the media bed, but in order to do that, we need to get the waste out of the bottom of the tank, which is three feet into the ground. And that's, this is 12 inches and roughly another 18 inches there. So it's at 30 inches uh, plus another 36 inches. So we need 96 inches of lift. Uh, and we tested the airlift pump to do that and to suck up the uh, fish waste from down below. There's a few challenges, though. We need to talk about those. I think it looks so cool in here at night. Uh, the sun's going down uh, and get some pretty cool shots of what it looks like. It really does look like Mars at nighttime in here with all the lighting. So some of the challenges that we have, uh, one, the bottom of these beds is not level. There are radiant heating tubes that go underneath the fish tank so that in the winter time, if it gets really cold and things fail, we can pump warm water underneath these beds. Since we've gone to the new heating system uh, last year, we really haven't had to use them, but the hoses are still there. So it's cattywampus under there. It's, it's not a flat, even surface. In addition, some things have fallen in there, rocks and such that need to be taken out, but I could jump in there and get those things out if I really had it. If there was a real reason there, I could do that. Um, another challenge is we actually bought one because I haven't got this figured out, but I, I actually have a pond vacuum coming that I'm going to have to get kind of under here, kind of a pain. And at a minimum, once a year, I'm going to have to get in there and uh, suck this stuff out. In fact, on this lane right here, we're actually having some of the new fish die 
and I'm pretty sure it's because there's anaerobic conditions down at the bottom because there's a lot of fish. This is one of the oldest beds, oldest lanes that we have and uh, needs to be cleaned out. That fish waste is down there. The water, the ammonia, the nitrites, the nitrates, it's, it's looking really good and the pH is looking good. Uh, we could just be having fish die because fish die, but uh, when you transplant them, they tend to die, but uh, natural loss. But it doesn't matter. We need to get that fish waste. So I'm going to have to get in here with my vacuum and I'm going to have to clean it. Now, we're, we're, we're going through this prototype so that we can figure out all these things that need to happen, right? Uh, and find the best solution we can possibly right now to help deal with them. Now, a pond vacuum, that's not a bad solution. We'll suck that stuff out. We'll move it up here. We'll let the red wigglers convert those solids into really good worm compost tea, return stuff back down in the, the fish tanks nice and clean. Life is good. At least that's the theory. We're designing this for other people. This is the first prototype of hopefully four that we're going to build. This is have one. We want to go through have four. By the time we get to have four, it's got to be a lot smaller. It's got to be super sexy. It's got to be simple to use, you know, turnkey operation. That means no getting out the vacuum and vacuuming fish tanks because nobody wants to do that. Really, no one, I don't want to do that. And this is my system and I don't want to, is it, I'd rather go do something else. Uh, I'd rather go rake the yard than clean out fish poo, but that doesn't matter. I need the fish poo. It's important, it needs to happen, but we need to find a way to make it as simple as possible. So here's some ideas. I got to do this trade study. So join me, Mission Control, in this trade study uh, because it's a tough one. It could be fun though. An airlift pump appears to be the way to go, right? You, you use air, you pump air down to the bottom, you connect it into a tube, uh, this is on a previous video, and you, that, that air bubble will change the density of water because uh, it's lighter, and it'll move up. And sure enough, I tested that. It will work. So I can run an air line uh, along this whole thing. I can put an air tube down there, uh, and I can have it sucking up waste. The problem is locomotion. That is movement. How do, how do I get it to move? It doesn't have to be in a perfect pattern, and it doesn't have to be fast. As long as it's working, um, it could be really, really slow. Just as long as it slowly moves around the bottom. It doesn't need to be like, eh, 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 I'm done. Just nice and slow. Get the air moving stuff in. It doesn't have to be a lot of air. A little, little uh, aquarium pump is enough to lift fish waste. It's enough to lift a small rock from the bottom of this tank up to the top. So it doesn't take a lot of power, which is really good but you gotta be able to move it. So you could put a motor underneath of here and have the motor move things, but then you also have to move this way. So you have to move lengthwise and you have to move side to side. Um, you can put a, a straight down pipe in there, but because it's this way at the bottom, uh, you could snag on the bottom. So you got some challenges there. That's one idea that could be played with more and get cleaned up. Uh, and I think whatever we do, the solution should work it should be scalable so that it works for a single bed or it works for a multitude of beds. It's got to be scalable. Okay, another idea. Um, you could put a platform underneath of there like the false bottoms on an aquarium and you could have a pump system on there that's lifting it all up. The challenge there is material cost. You're going to have to build those things and the bottom of the fish tank isn't even and you're still going to have waste that gets around the outside because it's not even. So that's kind of lower on my idea, but it is an idea and this is brainstorming. So uh, it's uh, open season on that. This is the one I really like <laughs> uh, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, we have lots of maneuverability in the, each of the lanes. They're wide enough for a wheelchair to fit in. Uh, they're also wide enough for a small tracked robot to fit in. Now I know I know you're thinking, that's really complicated, that's crazy, you're nuts. That's probably true on all accounts, but hear me out. I have a few problems, and I have a few opportunities. The fish waste. If I had a track robot, and he can put an arm out, he can kind of go back and forth, and I only have to spend the money once. I can build the track robot, and he can do the whole building. It doesn't have to be a smart robot. I can just record a macro, you know, basically I could remote control it myself for a few first few times, hit the record button on that macro, and then just have it execute the macro. I would never be satisfied with stopping there, but that, I could do it and it could start working. So I could put his arm out, 
have the suction thing in there, life is good. That would solve the fish tank problem, I'm pretty sure. And if you put some sensors, kind of make it smarter, I think it would work. A small tracked vehicle, pretty simple to buy, not hugely expensive, lots of programming, uh, an actuator arm that moves over. So you probably need something like the uh, arm on the space station or the space shuttle. God rest you, space shuttle, you are awesome. Um, you know, it could start here. So I don't want to turn my back to you guys. So if I'm the robot, I'm in storage uh, mode right now. I come up here. I'll drop down a little bit here. Uh, knees hurt because I've been running. Okay, arm extends, arm goes out, and then I could put another degree of freedom here, and then I can go back and forth, you know, extend out further, back, bring it over, back, and do that a few times, just back and forth, using the tracks, um, and use an airlift pump to where it has airlift on it, or, you know, somehow it connects in. Um, an air tank, you know, 12 volt powered uh, uh, pump, or it can have a charged tank on it. I think R2D2, you know, we can kind of make like a canister thing. I can take the vacuum and essentially put it on tracks and have it move back and forth, like R2D2. All right, so there, that's the fish tank. There's another problem, sensors, right? We're gonna talk about sensors in its own, the challenges with those, but I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag. Sensors cost too damn much, too damn much. They're, they're really important, but they cost a ton. Um, we got to find a better way, and I think I have one. Um, so you can do water tests. You can buy them for like 35 bucks, and then they come with the drops, and then the water changes colors, right? So you like drop, drop, drop. You, you take a water sample, you fill up the little tube, drop, 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 shake, 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 and then you compare the color, like a colorometer, uh, and then you dump that out. You know, do another one, different drops. You know, and then this one might be shake, 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 wait five minutes, put another solution in, uh, like our nitrates and nitrates do this, shake, 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 wait again, and then compare the color. Well, what if, it, instead of buying sensors for each lane, what if I just invested, I got the 3D printer, I get a little uh, pump, so here I am a robot again, I have my arm, I come in, I extend over, I drop a water collection probe, it collects the water, sucks it up into a central location here, drops it into each of my little driplet things, and built into its chest, I have the little dropper bottles, or um, no, what's it called? Uh, when you're in the hospital and they have the pumps on you, that pump can measure precisely uh, how much, what is that called? A dosage pump. I can have a dosage pump drop the doses right into this, uh, the solution, have a small shaker in there, shake it, uh, have it all in a black, uh, area that the no light penetration, do a colorometer test on it and record pH, nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, pH, uh, and probably get a whole bunch of other stuff using the chemical test method. I could do that. And then instead of having to build a sensor suite for each lane, I can just have the droid do it. I've been wanting to say that for so long. The Martian droid, whose name should be canine. Uh, okay, so that's another problem I have that could be solved with the robot. And the final problem is actually not a problem, it's an opportunity. So let's say you want to go somewhere, right, and, and uh, your plants are growing. What we have already learned is that the water level in here, it's important. And in, in a pure aquaponic system, you'd have water just constantly running in here. And that's all good, but we're trying to do some stuff here that's slightly different. and you. Some plants just don't like to be soaked in water. So what you can do is, like what I said at the beginning, is we have the valve controls it. So if, when you first plant something, you want the water level to come up to here. But as it grows and stuff grows on the top here, uh, we've already started noticing we need to reduce the water height so that those roots sink down and that they don't spread out shallow. That's what we've learned. That's the, what we're observing. So you can tell me I'm full of full of it or not, but it doesn't matter because that's what's happening here. Um, and I, I say that because people have said that about me. So um, what we have found is that as we drop the water level, the plant roots actually drop down and the higher stature plants become stronger in the system. Whereas if you don't do that and you keep the water up higher, they will grow. They will grow very well as far as their bushiness, but eventually they just go because they got no root structure to hold them to. 
So changing the water level is important, and one of the things that you would want to record, monitor, track with water level changes is how much plant growth you have. Uh, same with microgreens, like up here. So if I could have a camera, like a robot that's coming in to clean things or take water samples, a canine droid, if you will, and on it, its eyes were cameras, 1080p high definition video quality cameras. It could come in here, take a few snapshots, and then send that to the server, and the server does a change detection, and it addresses height, you know, the, the plants changing and how rapidly things are changing. And then we can use that to correlate to water level, and we can further optimize the use of water so that we're just not putting water in here. You know, as we put water in here, that exposes water to surface area. Surface area creates evaporation. Well, it doesn't create, but it results in easier evaporation. So we can reduce evaporation by minimizing the amount of water that we're using and keeping it down in the fish tank. So let's see, you have the, the fish waste removal. You have the uh, water quality testing and you have the camera. And then not to mention, you could just have another arm that's like the articulating arm uh, to where if you're not here, but you need to do something, you need to go hit a switch somewhere. Maybe you forgot to turn off a valve. That happens a lot. Uh, you can have the robot go and do those things for you. Just, you'd have to remotely drive it. This might sound really crazy, um, but it's not. At work, we have a robot that we bought from a company called Double Robotics. It's essentially a Segway with a, uh, and a stick with an iPad on it. And you can dial into that thing remotely from any place on the planet and drive it around the office and talk to people. This is essentially that idea, a, a dumb robot. It's not smart to start with. But through time, we could actually build, build in intelligence and put the right sensors in so it could actually you know, um, deal with obstacles. What I mean by that is if you, if you have like this area right here, normally it's clear. But let's say, you know, hey, I, I leave my shoe right here you know, accidentally, because why, you know, I love the way gravel feels on my bare foot. It's amazing, it's very, very comfortable, very uh, melancholy feeling, reminds me of childhood running barefoot in the yard. Whatever it is, I left my shoe there. The robot, he doesn't know that there's a shoe there. So if he's on a track vehicle, he's gonna come up with that shoe and it's gonna knock him off course. And without any smarts, he's just gonna run into the thing and I'm a dumb robot, dumb robot, don't know what to do. So you have to give him some smarts. You have to give him some sensors so that he can see, hey, there's something in the way. Let me go around that, blah, blah, blah. But to start off with, you don't need that. Just have to make sure you keep the pathway clear. That's what I got for fish waste removal. Like I said, I'm buying the uh, pond vacuum. It's coming, it'll be here this week. We're gonna vacuum these things out so the fish are happy while we try to figure this bigger problem out, the longer term solution. I really like the droid, I, I really do. I think the, the use of a droid in this case is actually the very appropriate use of, of technology. Um, it's just got to be kept simple and it's got to have clear value. And I think the vacuuming is value, the water testing is value. Mrs. Martian comes out here and spends an hour water testing. That's an hour she should be spending helping feed people, dealing with plants, cooking, doing whatever. Uh, that's what she likes to do, by the way. She likes to help people through food. That's her passion. She should be dealing with her passion, not chores like testing water. So a droid would be a good way to do that. I think I've pretty much made up my mind I want to do the droid. I'm just looking for confirmation that it's really doable. Uh, I've never built a robot, so it kind of makes me want to do it. I work at an unmanned aero vehicle company, so it's right up our alley, or my alley, I should say, for doing that type of thing. So anyway, curious to know your thoughts. What do you think of all that? Uh, are there other ideas, better ideas? Let's use the comment thread here to uh, really brainstorm uh, lots of ideas uh, and see what we can come up with. So, hey, thanks everyone for following along. That's it for this video on the challenges with fish waste. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, some cool ideas here. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian from Mars.